heart. They were unable to bring comfort to his soul. He had to live with what he had in his heart. The burden of one more. Just one more. He clutched that gold lapel pin you saw. And it was like his last regret thinking that though he had saved a thousand, again, he had not done all that he could. There was something left. There was still something in reserve. There was a car. What about my car? Why did I keep the car? This pen, it's gold. It's worth something to what? The world. In exchange for what? A soul that's dear to God. He held the ring that they had made for them. And if you did not hear that, the inscription written in it was, He who saves one life saves the world entire. He who saves one life saves the world entire. It shook and it altered who Oscar Schindler was. So how do we apply this, I wonder, this morning? How do we apply the illustration of the sanctity of life? How do we apply it to ourselves and to our own hearts? And this is what God wants to express to you this morning. How do we do that? Here in this place of safety, this place of of sanctity, this this place of, of peace, this place of love, this place of fellowship, how on earth does it apply to you and me? How does it apply to ourselves when we think of Oscar Schindler and how we would have reacted in the same place that he was in? Because there were dangers involved. How would I hold up in the face of the same circumstances that he encountered? Would we allow evil to prosper? Because we didn't want to get hurt? Or would we take a stand against it? Would we turn a blind eye to the victims who were perishing in our midst? Or would we risk everything? Everything we have, even our own lives, to stand in the gap between the Nazi and the Jew. I tell you this morning, people, that's a question I don't want to have to answer. And yet God still asks it today of you and I. I know we're not living in a war zone like the Jews in Krakow's ghetto were, but I, I, I don't think it too far-fetched to find some comparison here for us this morning. The story was and still is, the enemy was there. The enemy is still here. He hasn't gone anywhere. The sanctity of life was challenged then. And it's still being challenged this very hour. In our county. In our town. The sanctity of life is being challenged. All over the world, lives are being challenged. Persecutions are taking place right now. Christians are losing their head as we stand and sing. All over the world, enslavements, oppressions of all kinds, and and the opportunity to intervene, to make a difference is there also. The opportunity to save lives today is just as real as the opportunity that they had in that Second World War. The opportunity that God sets before you and me is the same opportunity that He set before Oscar Schindler. He said, you're going to have to make up your mind. What's important to you? I wonder in the end, I wonder in the end of my life, will there be regrets? I wonder at the end of your life, will there be regrets? in your heart this morning. This is a spiritual war, amen? Come on, it's always been a spiritual war. It's still a spiritual war. The desire for the mass extermination of every living human soul exists today. 
We have an enemy that wants you just as dead as he did those Jews in the ghetto. Just as removed, if he can convince you to be just a quiet little Christian and sit on your quiet little fanny and let, and let the quiet little world breeze by, he would be thrilled. You know that what we see that, what we understand. We understand what that means, but do we get it? The sense of urgency. See the sense of urgency. Where is the sense of urgency in the people of God? Why is it so fleeting? Because I feel it, but it doesn't stay. When I see someone hurting, someone injured, someone oppressed, when I see a man kneeling on the seashore having his head cut off, it concerns me. But it doesn't last. And I've got to ask, why, why is that? Why is it so fleeting? Why, when it's realized, does the realization diminish so quickly? Sometimes you go, Jack, what's wrong with you? Don't you get this? Yeah, I get it. I, I get it, but I I get it, but I don't have it. It like it comes and it goes. Well, I would say I've got to look again at Oscar Schindler. I got to go watch the movie again. We can be oblivious to what's going on. Hello. Because we're wrapped up in our own little world. We can be distracted by our own pursuits, our own desire. And the larger challenge to you and I this morning may come in the form of how we handle the question of the sanctity of life. How do we handle it when we're faced with it in our day-to-day living? Why is it so easy to drive by someone that you see in need? Someone in a wheelchair that can't get over the curb. Someone along the road that's broken down. Some, someone somewhere that you know as you pass, they, they could use help, but you pass. Why is that? We need, listen, I need a national sanctity of human life day. I need one. Thank you, Ronald Reagan. I need one. At least once a year, somebody gets in my face and goes, it is National Sanctity of Human Life Day. And the words whispered behind it is, so how's it going for you? How you doing with that? I need it if for nothing else than to serve as a reminder that I might not easily forget. This is uh, is not about condemnation this morning. Thank you, Jesus. But it is about realization. It is a pause to breathe in and breathe out and come to the realization of something that we might be missing. Tomorrow, the Bible assures me, has issues of its own. But today, National Sanctity of Human Life Day. Today. I'm faced with remembering. With being reminded not only of life itself, but the sanctity of that life. You see, Jesus set the price. He set the price on a life. He set the price of life when He left heaven, abandoning His Godship to come to earth to redeem mankind who could care less. He set the price when he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Amen? Jesus set the price. He set the price when he stood before Caiaphas, the high priest. He set the price when he stood before Pilate. He set the price when he was flogged. He set the price when he was driven to Calvary. When he was nailed to a cross. When he died on our behalf, he set the the price. You feel free right now. Turn somebody sitting next to you and tell them 
you're worth something. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're worth something. As we realize, I think, the sanctity of, of life is not an either-or proposition. It, it, it simply is. It rests in our submission to Jesus Christ, to the Lordship of Jesus in our lives. And it's remembering His words when He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Because if we seek the kingdom of God, we're going to find out what? Life is worth something. I am priceless. So are you. So are you this morning. Priceless. You can't afford me. I can't afford you. You cost it all. In the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, the Lord calls on us to invest where? In the kingdom. To invest in the kingdom for a maximum return on investment. So when all this is said and done, when Jesus said, well done, my good and faithful servant, when He comes and He puts His arm around you and says, well done, good and faithful servant, enter in. I wonder, will my knees begin to buckle under the weight of the memory of Oscar Schindler? I wonder if at that time I might repent, Lord, I could have saved one more. I could have saved five more, ten more. Lord, I did not do it all. I could have done more. This morning, we're going to take a special offering. And it's for the Foothill Pregnancy Center. I will tell you that right now. It's an offering with a cause. We do so much to support our friends there and the work that they do in our own community. This is not Bolivia. This is not Africa. This is not China. This is Sonora, California. Amen? And sometimes we look so far, so far to do ministry, so far away when the ministry is at our feet and we're looking right over the top of it for places to go. And God says, work for me here. Do what you can here. I've got assignments here. Today we're going to make a specific offering for them and it will be presented to them from you. Country Cowboy Church. And we're doing this all because it is National Sanctity of Life Day. Whether we recognize it or not. And the Lord's going to speak to our hearts this morning and we're going to answer Him as we bring forth offerings for them. And perhaps we can save one more. Maybe we can save five. Maybe we can save ten. But it's not the number that counts because if you save one, you've saved the world entire. Hebrews 10.34 says, for you had compassion on me in chains, he said, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have had, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Could I have my musicians come up for me, please? So I want to invite my ushers to come up here, please. And don't worry, we're not going to do this every week, but we are going to do it today.
Why? Because it's National Sanctity of Life Day. Amen? Amen. If you write out a check, simply write it to Country Cowboy Church. We'll see that it gets put into an account and that it goes directly to them. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the offerings that come forth in Jesus' name. And Lord, we know your capacity, your ability to bless and expand and grow, Father, the talents that are sown before you today, Lord God. So, Father, we ask in Jesus' name, Father, that you open our hearts, Father. You're not calling us to be stupid. You're not calling us to be ignorant. You're not calling us to put in next month's rent. But you're calling us to bring forth that which you will in our lives, that it might be given to others on your behalf. Father, bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.